and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, we go live on social media first, and then all sources linked up at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. In the News is brought to you by T1D Exchange. T1D Exchange is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. Our top story, a bit of a surprise for Vertex. The FDA puts a clinical hold on their newest trial. This is the company that made big headlines last fall. That New York Times article likely sent to you by everyone you know about a stem cell cure for type 1. That's when Vertex reported data on the cell therapy from a single patient who achieved a robust restoration of islet cell function. He received a drug called VX880, and that response is still going strong, they say, at day 270. This week, Vertex announced another patient is doing well, and a third patient has received a full dose. A company spokesman says they're surprised by the clinical hold, given the evidence so far, and there have been no serious adverse events. They say they will work with the FDA to get the trials moving again as soon as possible. Insulet announces that Omnipod 5 has completed the limited market release and will be rolling out to a wider audience soon. Those who signed up for what they call the interest list will be notified first. We're told to watch for that email this week. If you haven't signed up, sit tight. Omnipod 5 still is not yet available through all insurers and at every pharmacy, but the rollout will continue slowly through the year. We're learning more about Dexcom's G7 approved in Europe and in front of the U.S. FDA right now. Sensors will have a bit of a grace period. They'll keep working 12 hours after the 10 days are up. You'll also be able to silence the urgent low and sensor fail alarms for six hours. That's new. I'm talking to CTO Jake Leach for next week's long format show. He's got a lot of information to share, and I asked as many of your questions as I could, so please come back for that one. New study results about the ILET, the insulin-only bionic pancreas from Beta Bionics. This is one of many studies presented at ATTD. People in the study saw about half a point come off their A1Cs after 13 weeks. No increase in hypoglycemia. They also saw more than two and a half hours more time in range. The islet is unique in that you only enter your weight and tell the pump system when you're eating. There are no basal rates or need to enter carbs. No timeline for release, but the company says its regulatory submission is currently under FDA review. Amazon.com's online pharmacy pill pack has agreed to pay almost $6 million to resolve claims that it overcharged a government health insurance programs. They were dispensing more insulin pens than patients needed. That's the headline, but editorial here. This story just shows a lot about what's wrong with our system right now. Many of us have had this happen. It used to be if you got a prescription for insulin pens, they'd give you the box of five, even if the prescription was written for three or four pens. But now they break open the box, they put the pens in a baggie. You've had this happen. It's not as though a patient was overcharged here. That is not the focus of this lawsuit. This was about government health insurance programs, which I get we're all paying for that in our taxes. But maybe pass that copay cap or let Medicare negotiate prices or just cap the price overall. And then this issue and many others goes away. Walmart Health's telehealth company, MeMD, launched a virtual care diabetes program this week. The initiative known as the Walmart Health Virtual Care Diabetes Program was developed for employers and payers as a standalone offering or as part of a comprehensive telehealth program. It's a partnership with the ADA and includes a consultation with a licensed medical provider to discuss patient history, eating habits, and more. Right back to the news in a moment, but first we've got a new sponsor. As I mentioned, the T1D Exchange Registry is an online research study designed to harness the power of individuals with type 1 diabetes. Personal information remains confidential. Participation is fully voluntary. Once enrolled, Participants will complete annual surveys and have the opportunity to sign up for other studies on specific topics related to T1D. By sharing opinions, experiences, and data, patients can help advance meaningful T1D treatment, care, and policy. Sign up at t1dexchange.org slash Stacey. That is t1dexchange.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Back to the news and an Australian company joins the diabetes conversation on your Alexa device. Jade Diabetes says their My Jade skill can centralize logging, dose calculation, and dose management. It can also suggest dose changes within three hours. They say, quote, Jade is the only system to use accurate predictions to alert patients of future risks at a given time. It uses info from CGMs, connected glucose meters, digital pens, and data from Apple Health. I was really sad to hear that Healthline has decided to close down what I think 
has been just one of the best sources of diabetes news and information, Diabetes Mine. This was started by Amy Tendrick after her diagnosis in 2003 and acquired by Healthline in 2013. I've had her and managing editor Mike Hoskins on the show many times. Amy's amazing other project, D-Data Exchange, will live on. These are the biannual D-Data forums that connect experts, advocates, and innovators developing data platforms, apps, algorithms, and next-gen devices. You may recall the term, we are not waiting, was coined at the very first D-Data Exchange. It's a cool place to be. The next one is coming up June 2nd. More info in the show notes. On this week's long format episode, you'll hear about the Mental Health Plus Diabetes Conference. The organizer said every conference has one session on mental health, but we really need more. So they did it. I love that when people just see a need and and fill it. Well, next week, as I mentioned, Dexcom's chief technical officer will talk to us about the G7. I asked him all of your questions. He had some really great info. And he even mentioned, unprompted, he mentioned the G8. So you'll want to come back and tune in for that. Listen wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you're listening to this one. That is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.